Over the past four years, I have been building the biggest wargaming board in YouTube history. The biggest board for the greatest locations in all of Middle Earth. This monstrous layout begins with the incredible white city of Minas Tirith, soars across the rolling Pelennor fields, and ends in the war-torn flooded streets of Osgiliath. Last year before my big move to New Zealand, my mate Ryan and I laid out the entire mega layout for the first time and it was a very special moment. The full Siege of Gondor mega layout. This is mental. But it's about to get even bigger. Today we are smashing out the most important section of the build so far here in New Zealand, before we pack up the full board in Australia and ship it across the Tasman a whopping two and a half thousand kilometers from Brisbane to Christchurch and can finally unite the landscape into one massive diorama. We actually started this very special section of the build earlier in the year, hiking out to the exact mountain range from Peter Jackson's trilogy where these Middle Earth locations were filmed and began to create an incredibly accurate diorama of the buildings within the inner courtyard just inside the main gate of Minas Tirith. We started this build with a very specific material. Earlier this year, Games Workshop sent me the biggest pile of plastic crack that I have ever seen, including 70 sprues of the stunning new Gondor scenery. I've got so much already. <laughs> Give me all the plastic! When we add this plastic mountain to the leftover pieces they sent me last November when we built the Osgiliath portion of the board, we've got an absolute horde of plastic crack. <sighs> But as amazing as these kits are, they work even better when you get extra creative with them, combining them with some more traditional crafting techniques to truly bring Minas Tirith to life. So to kick us back off on this Siege of Gondor mega board journey, we need a plan. So this is everything that we've built so far for the next section of Minas Tirith. And it's a great start, it's looking nice, but to get a kind of really nice immersive landscape like the first portions of the White City, we're going to need to get creative. And to add a bit of an extra challenge, those first two city blocks are very, very static with basically zero modularity. For the third city sector, that is going to change. I love the first two Tuba Town boards. They are probably my favorite thing that I've ever crafted. I worked on these two city blocks with a whole host of other YouTubers who each made a building and posted them down to join the city and then I built the landscape around them. But it means that as sexy as the landscape is, it's very static. And now I'm here in New Zealand, I'm trying to go to a lot more Lord of the Rings tournaments. So I want this board to have two different game modes. First, we'll have its gorgeous master configuration that super accurately represents the courtyard as we see it in the films and the onset plans and schematics, and of course, the Weta Workshop bigature. There is a huge wealth of resources that have been my holy grail in crafting it as accurate to the screen as possible in the building process so far. But if I build this master layout in a clever way, I'll also be able to morph the board into a really nice modular 4x4 gaming board really suited for tournaments. And as an added bonus, when I finally relaunch our Middle Earth live streams on my Middle Earth wargaming channel, Zorp of the Rings, this layout configuration will be perfect for the live stream battle reports, which I promise are returning eventually. To get the ball rolling, I decided after a whopping 14 weeks of straight editing, I needed to kick my hobby mojo into gear by knocking up a completely scratch built building to explore the techniques used to make a foam building before we combine the methods of foam carving and plastic bashing for some gorgeous hybrids. I used to do this all by hand, but as this project has ticked along, Albie from Microforge Minis, who has long supported this build designing templates, has launched an amazing range of products called Slice and Slot, which are 3D files for the really annoying parts of a building to carve. The windows, doors, archways, which you can then print in resin like these sexy details you can see here, and blast out the bulk of simple foam stonework, and then combine them together for an awesome building. 
I had a look through the footage and saw a simple little half building that is built into the wall and the cliff face of the second level overlooking the courtyard and decided it was the perfect candidate and picked some windows and arches that matched the styles from the bigotry and then sliced out some slots for the resin detail pieces to slide into. After a dry fit to make sure they ended up where I wanted them, it was then the old foam carve routine. Rule in a bunch of lines, widen the grout lines with a pencil, and then texture the surface by depressing a bunch of random bricks with the back of a scalpel, and then imprinting a rocky finish with some scrunched up alfoil. With the lower level finished, I moved on to the second story, this time with some smaller windows and arches, and repeated the whole process to get a lovely front facade for our wall-mounted structure. I then moved on to making our half walls with the classic Gondorian roof line we see in so many buildings in the films and then added a few extra archways to one side, slicing the side in half so that I could slot some windows halfway up before working in some glorious stonework on both sides of the wall. I kept the other side free of resin printed details just in case I want to build up against it and then joined all three sides together with some PVA and wooden skewers. Refreshed on my carving, I decided to get a firm idea for the city layout. Before designing our first hybrid building, we need to finally build the ground layer or foundation of this portion of the city. And this is where we start to explore the method I'll be using to create a sexy finished diorama that is still going to be modular. Each plastic building is going to be built onto its own rectangular tile of 25mm XPS foam, which matches the thickness of the other sections of the city. And the plan is to have these tiles be raised up and then have a bunch of road and alleyway tiles made out of 20mm foam, so there are sort of like natural gutters for every building no matter how they are joined together. But I want the plinth beneath each building to wind its way around the interesting floor plans I've devised, so I cut each rectangular tile into pieces to accentuate each specific building's floor plan. I then grabbed my first building and set aside the cutouts from beyond the footprint, and then scored in a stone pattern of floor tiles into the plinth. Nothing crazy, just a random assortment of squares and rectangles, which all got the same stone treatment as our walls to bring it to life. This foam does have quite a hard skin, a layer on the outside surface of the foam, which makes it harder to impart detail upon it, but what it does do is texture with quite an interesting marbled finish, which I think works quite well for Minas Tirith. I then continue the floor tiles around the edges so that when the tile sits against shorter road tiles, we see a nice stone edge for our gutter. Then it was time to work on those little cutouts. I grabbed each one and sliced off 5mm to make them the height of the road rather than the height of the plinth, and then used my texture roller to impart a nice flagstone pattern. We used a clever little trick of pre-cutting the trim and folding it out of the way to allow me just to texture roller the center before finishing the edges with my scalpel. With the plinth now finished, it's time to glue down our first floor, and this sheet of foam actually had a little bit of a warp in it, so I used two glues, my standard high strength PVA, and then this amazing cyanoacrylate based super glue that is foam safe. Yes, you heard me right. Non-foam melting super glue called rocket glue from Deluxe Materials. I put a seam of PVA along the edges, but left little gaps for the rocket glue, and then dabbed that on, flipped the piece over, and weighted it in place. The super glue permeates the foam layer, and creates a real locking bond that holds it in place while the PVA cures properly. Amazing stuff. You can pick up this glue and basically every hobby or Warhammer product you could think of from Gap Games in Australia and get an extra bonus discount if you use my affiliate link in the descriptions or simply use the code ZORP at checkout. Brett and the team actually sent me over this whole care package of deluxe materials glues and hobby supplies, which has just been amazing to resupply my brand new hobby workshop here in New Zealand. I've basically got every glue for every possible situation now, and I'm looking forward to trying them all out. I continue this process through the rest of the buildings, cutting down the cutouts to 20 millimeters, and then texturing the upper plinths with hand carved patterns whilst rolling those lower areas, and then gluing them all together with a bunch of skewers and PVA, and then mounting my plastic structures, and I'm really happy with how that slight terraced look comes off. 
Then I grabbed my live streaming board and whacked it onto the table with the modular board facing up and started having a play with the layout, moving my tiles around and then cutting to size a bunch of 20 millimeter thick foam tiles, which will eventually become the roadways between all of the buildings. So part of the reason that these builds take so damn long is my obsession with screen accuracy. You would think oh, all I've really carved here is half a building and now we've added in these floor tiles. They're the kind of different thickness so we can create some nice floor tile variation. And you, it just doesn't look like that much work. And you guys might be like, oh, Lockie's just been messing about. This is two days of solid carving and planning, comparing all of the film footage and photos and stills and all our resources to try and get the perfect translation of this location to tabletop, as screen accurate as possible, but also in a way that works at this scale. It's an absolute slog. So, where do we go from here? So I do think I have a pretty good lock now on the layout. This is going to be our final edge, a little alleyway here, and then over through here, this will be our ship keel of stone thrust out to about here, statues, big statue in the middle, but where this is going to expand beyond the courtyard is over on the southern side. And a big, quite large street that runs up the side here, and another couple of Gondorian buildings, an alleyway round the back, and then of course our wall joining in with the ship keel of stone, some extra kind of buildings built into that wall, so now we've got kind of this new phase where we're going to start blending the amazing properties of the Games Workshop plastic kits with some hand carved foam and kind of create a real tapestry of different structures that blends all of these types of builds with our gorgeous handcrafted and microforge mini slice and slot stuff and hopefully get a real tapestry of Minas Tirith. I knew I wanted to begin on the southern side of the board, and my next building needed to join to the little walkway that extended out from a doorway of the large courtyard structure. So I had a big scrub through all my reference images to find some inspiration, and decided on a pretty simple square structure that will have an upper level of plastic to mesh with our existing buildings, and then a foam carved lower level. I grabbed two sheets of 25mm XPS foam and glued them together and carved a simple foam pattern into the outward facing sides. I made the flooring of the first floor from plastic floor tiles with a foam trim to blend in those edges, carving a nice little edge of stone to accent the outer wall and start blending our plastic and foam components together. Next, I knocked over a simple first floor with 12 wall tiles. I glued these all in place and then gave everything foam a final texture pass to ensure a nice blend between the layers. Then I knocked up the external stairwell with the gorgeous Ray Dranfield design stairwell pieces and glued those in place, creating channels in the foam wall to make the plastic pieces mesh really seamlessly. The internal stairwell glued in super simply and I then grabbed the little walkway and mocked up a test fit with our main structure and we can see that that is going to work nicely. It looks great and it's fantastic for gameplay as those upper levels now have two access points. This video has no sponsor, and that's because ZorpaZorp is dead quiet at the moment. No views means no YouTube ad rev, no sponsors, and no money, basically. So I just wanted to do two quick shout outs instead of an ad read. First, to my amazing Patreons, we are so f broke at the moment and having you guys that check every month to rely on it's been massive for my family and, and for keeping the channel alive so thank you to all of our patreons and secondly i want to shout out the mesbg tracker this is my mate jimmy's amazing app for tracking all of your heroic stats while you're playing middle earth strategy battle game it is just so freaking cool i've been using this bad boy every time i play sbg ever since jimmy stole my phone and installed it at the new zealand league final last november you can you can build army lists and track your breakpoints, custom trackers for things like farsight points, and of course, create profiles for every hero in your force. Then when you play a game, just tap on the characteristic to reduce it, or double tap to increase. Might, will, fate, wounds, and even kill counts all there at your fingertips. You can name your heroes whatever you want, and it's free for a whole month, and then only a buck a month after that. It's super cheap, even though there's lots of costs to cover for app development, so support a great app being made by the community for the community all the links are down in the description if you play SBG you want this on your phone 
I built the second floor, a simple L-shaped balcony to wrap around the internal stairwell, and then built out the edging above the lower level with some more foam to get at the same height as our floor tiles, and for our next floor we're going to switch back to foam. The real aim of these hybrids is to not only give us flexibility in what we can make as we can carve anything, whereas the plastic kits are incredible but a little more limiting, but foam also allows us to stretch those plastic pieces across more buildings and give us a real mix of architecture styles from building to building. I wanted a simple tower for this next level to extend up from our balcony, so I cut four foam panels and then scored in some more brickwork with some amazing MDF cutting guides which arrived in perfect time in a new care package from LB from Microforge Minis, which makes some really interesting and nuanced brickwork patterns that are really easy to carve quickly. To keep the detail level consistent between the foam and plastic layers, I added yet more of Elby's amazing slice and slot resin feature pieces, making an archway for the top of the stairs, and then some windows on three of the sides, but I kept one side completely untouched for some sneaky future plans. I glued the four sides together once again with PVA, deluxe materials foam safe super glue and wooden skewers which gets it super strong super fast and then whacked it all on top of my building. Now where do we go from here? I started to play with a couple of ideas. For ages, ever since I got sent 10 bloody towers, I've really wanted to find a way to start incorporating tower pieces into the other builds. So I looked at making a half tower coming off one side where I didn't carve any windows or even just ornamenting the top with another upper level out of plastic and a tower topper. But I'm just not sure yet and I don't want to make a hard choice until I've built some of the second wall which slots in behind this build Building, so I reckon I've got my build techniques locked down. I'm loving the look of this hybrid style of foam plastic architecture. Now all I have to do is a hell of a lot more crafting. I'll see you in the next one.